Welcome to the world famous Hockenheim ring for the next round of the FIA and FIM European Drag Racing Championship. As you can see, beautiful weather, so beautiful, over 40 degrees in qualifying yesterday, but still the crowd absolutely love it as you can hear. Things have moved on in the championship a little bit since we've been to Santa Bod. Everybody's been around Scandinavia, but the main players are still the same. New racetrack to contend with, expertly prepared. Let's see what the weekend brings. Here in the Super Twin Pits with Christian Jaeger. Christian, unfortunately, doesn't have his bike with him this weekend. Yeah. Christian, what's the plan? Why are you not here racing this weekend? Yeah, the, pl the plan was, firstly, to bring the new bike out. We designed a brand new chassis with brand new front and rear, wider uh, rear tire. And yeah, the thing is, we want, we want to have a stronger chassis to produce more power, or we can produce more power. And we have last week, last year, a lot of problems and a lot of trouble with the old chassis. It's too much. It was too much flex in it and doesn't go straight. So next year you'll be back stronger than ever, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But I think for the first one or two races, we need some checkout passes and find out how it works in new chassis. But I think it, it works perfect. I, I see the simulations on the computer on the no, new chassis and uh, it's a higher technology level what we work uh, on it. And I think it must be work. It's only the way. <laughs> Well, fortunately, we found a place to cool off a little bit in the pit box here at Hockenheim. It's quite nice, actually, with pro stock bike rider Karl-Heinz Weichen from Germany. Karl-Heinz, home race at Hockenheim, very, very hot weather, yeah. but it still must be good fun. Yeah, so uh, yesterday we did... Uh, I, I tried to, to, to figure out something for this hot weather, but uh, I, ne I never had this condition, so... Uh, but... Uh, uh, yeah. I tried something and it was running, for me it was not running good, but I, may, I got into the third spot, so every, everybody else had the same issue like me. So what can you change on the bike? Uh, so on the, on the pro stock bike, you cannot change that much, so we can just uh, change the, uh, the, the carb setups, making a bit a lean, lean out or rich, rich it up, but not that much. But uh, I had no basic for this hot temperature, so I just put in something, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I changed uh, the setup for the second qualification yesterday, but uh, so they crossed it off. So, so no maybe, data as for maybe, maybe it will be the same today. Yeah. Well, the crowd at Hockenheim enjoying the bikes tremendously, and this was the real highlight of the qualifying sessions in Pro Stock Bike. Now going in to the last couple of pairs, Frederick Friedland was number three with a 7.29, and Gert Jan Lesseur was number one with a 7.21. But, as you're about to see, that all kind of got mixed up a little bit. Fred is out here alongside Kenneth Holmberg with the Swede Composite bike. There he is, Frederick Freeland. that's the Pro Stock Bike Racer's Prayer. As I like to call it, gets a thumbs up from his crew chief. And Freddie looking to improve. He'd been off his normal number one pace so far, it's always a bit of a shock when Fred doesn't end up, end up number one, though. So what can he do on his last qualifying run? He's only got two bikes behind him. Up on the two-step and away together. Frederick Freeland with a picture-perfect run, as was Kenneth Holmberg, actually. Now, Freddie goes past Gert Jan to the number one spot with our first 7-1 of the weekend, a 7.17 second run which the team were very happy with indeed, but either of these two could take it off him. Robert Carlson, great to see him down here from Sweden. Not many people borrow their daughter's bike to go racing, but as you can see, that says Elvira on the side of it. I think that's Europe's first six second pro stock bike on that side of the racetrack, but all eyes were on Gert Yang, sir, to see if he could take back that number one spot. Frederick just took it with that 7.17. Gert Yang with a really strong run on the far side of the track with a Buell. Congratulations, first time ever number one qualifier in Pro Stock Bike. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we've been struggling for seven years now and uh, finally we got there. Yeah. 
So everybody else with four cylinders is struggling. Yep. What is it about two cylinders that worked to this uh, weekend? Well, we stepped up after Santa Pop, the engine broke, so we got faster parts from Star Racing. Uh, but the weather, we were also struggling. And for the driver, it's very hard. It's hard to drive. It's hard to see the track, like uh, sweat in the eyes and everything. But, uh, well, we're still the number one qualifier, so uh, something must be right. On to the Nitro bikes, and it's the Super Twins that we're going to be seeing here first. Great field this weekend, drawn from all over the place. But, again, stop me if you've heard this before. Not that man there, but the guy on the other side of the racetrack. That's Martin de Haas with the, uh, the de Haas brothers twin. They lost their major sponsor over the winter, and uh, everybody was wondering if they could still keep up the pace from last year. The answer was a resounding yes. If you watch the way that he rides this bike, I do mention this quite a lot, but it just astounds me how he manages to hang on to this thing. Flying down the left-hand lane into number one. Martin, different racetrack, same story, number one qualifier again. How do you keep doing it? Well, it was a big, a big struggle actually this time. Uh, unfortunately, the track has improved very, very much this year, and uh, the weather wasn't uh, that well willing with all the, the heat and sums. It was a big struggle. The team did a great job, the job in, uh, in, uh, in perfecting it, the bike, and uh, we managed to squeeze out a 6.8. But uh, when we lifted, uh, wanted to put a little bit more in for a 6.7, proved too much the last run, but uh, we did an excellent job. We did an excellent job. Well, the supercharged Nitro bikes this time. That's Rene Vanderberg alongside Ian King. These bikes are fairly similar. They're both built by Puma Engineering. So Rene and Ian looking to go number one. But in no surprise at all, Ian King on the near side of the racetrack. Rene breaks on the line in with a storming run. Flies all the way through to a 6-14. Ian, number one again. How are you finding this kind of heat with your bike? Well, I mean, obviously it's quite tough on, on the tune because, you know, we're not used to running in conditions like this. But uh, the main thing is to control the clutch much better, or should I say much more closely than we're, we normally would have to. Um, it's tough, but, you know, we ran pretty well uh, to qualify number one. Um, we can see this is a five second track without the heat. With the heat, it's a very good track. So. Uh, the guy's done a great job preparing it here. Bearing in mind it was up to almost 40 degrees when we were running, we get down to 30 or slightly below, for sure. I mean, on our 6.15 second run, um, I clicked it off quite early. Uh, we had a reasonably mediocre 60 foot. Um, so yeah, we, we really believe it's a, it's a five second track. Down here on the start line in Hockenheim with promoter Keith Bartlett. Keith. One of the best shows in drag racing. Great to be back here at the Hockenheim. The track looks fantastic as well. Yeah, I mean, you remember last year we had a few problems with the track, so we worked very hard over the last few weeks. We've had our own track crews from England working with the uh, track crews from Hockenheim. I think we've really got the track really, really good. Sadly, can't believe I'm saying this in drag racing, the weather's too hot. So we haven't got the optimum level we thought we'd have got out the track. Nonetheless, it's been absolutely brilliant runs. Tracks held up through what well, I think is probably 130 degrees heat maybe today. Should have been 20 degrees lower. We'd have had a, just an awesome killer track to, to use a drag racing expression. But it's been really good. What I've really been pleased with, we've seen lots of real close side-by-side -side races in all the classes. Though it's qualifying side-by-side, -side, the crowd have loved it. Good for television. So. All in all, an extremely good day at Hockenheim League.
Welcome back to race day here at the Hockenheim Ring. You can see the stands filling up with spectators for what's going to be a great, great day's action. For the first time all weekend, we've got nice cloud cover. It's really, really cool, perfect racing conditions. Let's get on with the action. This year, with what the Hockenheim Ring have done, it's made a massive difference because you've got a very smooth surface. Uh, the work hasn't been purely by the people that you see running around with tractors and glue and gold dust and all the various chemicals and bits and pieces that goes into making a racing surface that will work. But uh, there's a bunch of guys in the background that work for the Hockenheim Ring who have ground certain areas of the track to make it as smooth as possible. In doing so, that's made it our job that much easier in order to apply rubber to the surface. When you've got a smooth surface, the whole tyre's on the on the ground, which means that the vehicles are going forward, they're not spending half their life in the air, so to speak. So, uh, as I say, with the glue, uh, with the gold dust, with the sledding and three weeks of work, that's what goes into making a racetrack that we have today. The cleaning up, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are, it's always difficult, but uh, the biggest problem that you have with that is uh, it's not A, just cleaning up uh, the problem, be it oil transmission fluid, whatever it might be, but it's then creating a parity between the two lanes. Each rider and driver that comes round expects that the lanes to be as, as close as possible as they can be because then you have a fairer race based on those grounds. So that's the difficult part, trying to bring the, the track to the same levels and maintaining that level as well. That's, I guess, the hardest part. Well, the first guy is out to check out that track prep. Wooey, pro stop bike. Now, this is the second round because we had a full 16 bike field in FIM Pro Stock Bike. It really was a great weekend for all of them. Gertian Lasur though, still the quickest so far this weekend. He went 7.13 in round one. Round two, he's up against one of our guys from France. That's Bertrand Maurice. Staging up near side of the racetrack is Gertian Bertrand's bike with a bit of smoke out from the start line. It's absolutely trainlinked by that Buell. And Gertian Lasur with another great run at 7.15 marching through the field. Up next going to be Karl-Heinz Weikum, that's him on the black and red bike up against the Swede composite machine of Kenny Holberg. There, this could well be uh, a pick and race between these two. There's hardly anything between them on their qualifying numbers and Kenneth Holberg's been in the seven ones. Not this weekend, but he has done it before. Karl Heinz looking to do well at his home race. So they edge into the beams. Very, very tricky staging procedure with these bikes. Karl Heinz Weikum is all the way in. The light flickering for Kenneth Holmberg and it flickered off just as the tree ran. So he didn't get to leave and it was Karl Heinz Weikum with a 7.32. Sets up a date with Gert Jan Lasseur. Yeah, Kenneth Holmberg's bike just kind of quit on the start line. I think he quit it, not the other way around. The Bish himself, Martin Bishop, is next to take on Frederick Friedland. Fred Khrushchev says move that way by that much, sir. And he does. Very, very critical to get these bikes and cars obviously lined up exactly in the right place off the start line. Perfect launch is what it's all about. And that can be the difference between winning and losing. On that subject, it is Martin Bishop near lane with a whole shot, but Frederick Friedland's gone round him already. Flies through with a 7.17. To Martins lose out 7.49. The last pair, Robert Carlson. As I said before, on his daughter's borrowed bike. Elvira on the side of it. Just taking back the keys for the weekend, I think. Up against Alex Hope. Now Alex whole shotted his way to the final at the main event, the first round of the FIM Championship back at Santa Pod. May need to do that as well here because on their qualifying times. And also what they ran in the first round, Robert Carlson has got a couple of tenths of a second over Alex Hope. It's a bit tough to make up all that on the start line. Let's see if they've dialed any more power into the blue machine in the near lane. But it is Robert Carlson away first, only just though, and streaking away to a 7.24. Sets up a date with Fred in the semi-finals. Crew happy with that one. So to the semi-finals we go. Gert Janusur near lane. Karl-Heinz Weikum for the home team on the far side of the racetrack. 
Now, Gert Jan's been in the 7-1s. Karl Heinz kind of stuck in the 7-2s. He's been quicker than that before, just not this weekend on this racetrack. When the weather gets really warm like it is here in Germany, um, fair to say a fairly hefty heat wave rolling through Central Europe this weekend. Uh, it's very difficult to tune the bike, especially if you're not used to it as well. We're used to really nice cool conditions in Europe. So Gert Jan with a V-twin Buell, the slightly more traditional way there's more of them. Suzuki for Karl Heinz, and it is Karl Heinz Viking with a big hole shot, 0-4 to a point one one. But the horsepower in Gert Jan Lesseur's machine runs him down, 7-14 to 7-26. His dream weekend continues on one more round. So who will be running that formidable Buell in the final? Will it be Frederick Fredland or Robert Carlson? They've both been in the 7-1s. Robert Carlson actually went 7-13 in round one, fell off a bit in round two, but the sun's out, the track is warm. And Robert Carlson, unfortunately, he's out of it. Problems when they tried to start the bike, Frederick Fredland gets a freebie. A tune-up run, if you will. Gert Jan Lesseur went 7.14 on this run. Fred goes 7.12 for lane choice in the final. Eliminations for the Super Twins. First pair, Martin de Hasch, number one qualifier, up against the gorgeous new bike of Roman Sixter. They both give each other a nod to say, yep, let's go. Big burnout for both. You can see the almost now traditional parachute hanging off the back of Roman Sixter's bike as well. Not just the preserve of cars anymore, parachutes. They slow bikes down too, but Roman Sixter with problems. Oh, what a great shame for him, all the way from the Czech Republic and uh, out before he even gets a chance to stage the bike. It will be Martin de Haas with a bike run. Now, Martin's going to be tough to get around anyway if he runs what he normally does. Cranks the wheel over to the right off the start line, keeps it nice and straight. And a 6.74, low ET of the weekend so far for the De Haas brothers. Very happy indeed as well. Well, one guy you don't see, sadly, at many FIM events, but he's making the trip out this weekend. Bruno Celesi from France. That was him on the other side of the racetrack burning out. This is Ronnie Orson, previous champ on the supercharged Zodiac machine, lining himself up. Now, Bruno was your number five qualifier. Ronnie was number two back in the 60s again, where he belongs. Yeah, this bike of Bruno Celesi's is uh, quite a nice piece of kit. And if they can get it stuck in a straight line, he normally runs in France on, uh, they run on like kind of airfield type racetrack. But coming here to Hockenheim, this is a very, very well prepared place. See what I can do against Ronnie Olsen. Well, Bruno with trouble off the line. Ronnie with a gorgeous run. Oh, just gets off the throttle to avoid going over the centre line. I think he kind of blew that block over. He didn't get over the line, but he still goes through with a 6.98 as Bruno bows out. So, Job Hazen from the Netherlands. That's him there with the Sidewinder V-Twin. Going to be taking on Peter Seska from the Czech Republic. Job was down in the sixes on quite a few occasions last year. He's yet to get in the sixes so far this summer. Now would be a great, great time. The team got a lot of experience, really know what they're doing with this bike, but sometimes these things just fight back at you. So, Job on the far side, Peter Skeska near lane. Well, Job with the whole shot. Bike's not running nearly as quickly as they normally would. I think they've both got problems, but Job's keeping on it. And he does get the win on one of the most improbable hole shots you'll ever see. Nine flat to an 8.95. Semi-final time for Super Twin. By virtue of the odd lock field, Martin de Haas gets a bye run, like he needs any help at the moment. Running solidly in the sixes. And 6.74 in round one. This will be effectively a tune-up run for the final. What I mean by that is, because they've got a bye run, they can either choose to try and run hard, see what the racetrack will take, or maybe even take it easy. I don't think they're going to do that, to be honest with you. Martin cranks the wheel on that bike as soon as he gets on the throttle and never lets go as well. Another flying run. That one was really straight as well. 6.78 certainly shows it. Seem very happy with that one. 
So one Dutchman in the final, can it be an all Dutch final? The answer I think is going to be yes. Roddy Orson was down there, unfortunately couldn't get the bike started. The Zodiac team having problems before they could uh, get it fired. You can see them walking off in the distance, unfortunately. Job Hazen is going to set up that all Dutch final against Martin de Haas. The bike's still not running right. The team scratching their heads as to what the problem might be, but I shouldn't think they could care less at the moment because they're in the final, no matter what happens. So we move from Nitro Twins to Nitro Top Fuel Bikes. Four cylinders in line and a big supercharger on the front of Ian King's bike. Was due to be racing Rene van der Berg. Rene had trouble in qualifying, couldn't make it out the first round call. So Ian King with a buy. And Ian really needs this buy run as well because he didn't advance as far as he would like at the last round of the championship. Needs the points to keep going and move up again. Another flying run, clicks it off way before the finish line and still goes 6.30. Only 309 kilometres an hour. Show just how early he clicked it off. Side by side, top fuel bikes, near side of the racetrack. That's Nick Milburn with one of the most storied and historic top fuel bikes you'll ever see. That bike was originally imported, I think, in the 80s into Europe. This is Otto Knebel from the Czech Republic. Now, the interesting note of fact with both of these bikes is they both belong to the late Brian Johnson. They were both Imperial Wizards. By that, I mean that was the name that Brian gave to his bike. The bike in the near lane that Otto Knebel on is the most recent version. You can see the pair of them lined up together, just the, uh, the evolution of technology, if you like, in top fuel bike. Let's see which one of the two of them wins on the racetrack, most importantly. So Nick Milburn from the UK, Czech Republic, Otto Knebel, far side of the track. Winner of this face is Ian King. Nick Milburn with tyre smoke off the start line. They both drift towards the centre line. It's Otto that manages to get on the power again first. <laughs> what a great race. The Drag Factory team. All the way from the Czech Republic, applaud their rider for a great job, keeping it in his own lane, most importantly there. So another breakage, unfortunately, on the other side of the racetrack, Phil Papafilippou from Greece. With the first non-supercharged nitro bike we're going to see out here on the track today. Still very competitive indeed. Normally more consistent, but not quite as quick when they run on song, these kind of machines. So Phil been in the sixes on a number of occasions. Brings the revs up. Got a nice run going. Oh, there's a flash of flame underneath the bike. And that flash of flame is followed by a puff of smoke. And that hopefully is not too bad for Phil, but it doesn't bode well. The last pair in round one of FIM Top Fuel Bike. Going to be Top Fuel Bike against Funny Bike. This guy here, another Frenchman joining us in the FIM Travelling Circus this weekend. We're very, very pleased to see him. That's Anton Kupiak with the supercharged four-cylinder nitro machine against Ricard Gustafsson. Now, Ricard is a hard, hard man to get around. Qualified in the sixes. This turbo funny bike is pretty much the quickest in the world for this sort of machine. And Ricard has great fun running against the uh, more traditional top fuel bikes, if you like. He's going to be joining them soon, though, because he's built his own one. Both lean the line together. Oh, unfortunately, after a strong start, Anton Kupiak had to shut the bike off. Rickard goes through with a 6.52. Told you that thing could run. And Anton bows out in round one. <laughs> Semi-finals are... Oh. Pair of side-by-side -side top field bikes, Ian King against Otto Knebel. These two have raced each other a number of times. In fact, it was also Knievel last year was the only person on the planet to beat Ian King. To be fair to Ian, uh, he did have a rather nice bonfire going on underneath him because the engine went pop. That was at the European finals and also Knievel got the win on the other side of the racetrack. But rebuilt Ian has been stronger than ever in 2015. Otto Knievel hasn't made it into the sixes so far this weekend. The bike's been there on a number of occasions before. Uh, now would be a good time. 
The sun's come out, it's got a lot hotter. Ian King gets the whole shot off the start line. That could be the end of Otto Knievel's day, and I think it definitely is. Look at that. All the way through to a 6.35, 3.33. Otto clicks it a little early. I think he knew his day was done. Well, the other side of the ladder should have been a match-up of the funny bikes. Rickard Gustafsson against Phil Papafilippou, but unfortunately, that flash and smoke for Phil was the end of his weekend anyway. So, Rickard looking to run as quick as he can, try and get lane choice off of Ian King for the final. Lane choice goes to the quicker car or bike in the previous round. Rickard really going for it, holding on for dear life all the way down the track, but 6.57 won't get him lane choice, although still very happy with that indeed, I'm sure. Back to Pro Stop Bike. The long-awaited final between the two, pretty much the two quickest riders throughout the weekend. Gert Jan Lesur against Frederick Friedland. Euroil in the Netherlands and a Bjorn up against Play Amongst Friends and a Suzuki from Orland or Finland, if you prefer. This could well be won and lost on the start line. Could definitely, definitely be one of those races. Gert Jan was a little slow off the line in his semi-final matchup. Needs to be a little bit more in his game against Fred. Well, they're actually almost dead even. Slight advantage to Frederick, but not by much. Now, fortunately, he drifts towards the centre line and Gert Jan takes the event win at the Nitro Olympics. Gert Jan, first number one qualifier and your yeah. first ever win. First well. ever win in Prostock Bike. I'm so happy. We, well, it, we went like a train this weekend. Everything went well. The bike was running awesome. And uh, maybe it could have gone better, but I'm not... Oh, I need to learn the better driver, but it's get, we're getting there. Well, Gert Jan makes a big move up in the points after his problems at Santa Pod. He's only 40 points behind your leader, Frederick Friedland. Final for the Super Twins. Your winner from back at the main event is Martin de Haas. Joe Payson having a Pretty horrible weekend so far, other than the fact he's in a final. Bike just hasn't been behaving itself over the last couple of days here in Germany. But you never know, now could be the time where it all goes in the right direction. These two have raced each other a number of times. The most memorable was at the European finals at Santa Pod last year, when Martin de Haas took the win, but they were side by side, wheels up from one end to the other. It really was a stunning race. Let's see what they got for us lining up here at the final in Hockenheim. It's late in the day. The track hasn't cooled off any at all, though. It's still about 37 degrees. Both in full stage, and both away almost together. Joe's bike falls flat off the line. Oh, and then a huge explosion. Martin de Haas powers through for the win. Takes it with a 6.75, but Job Hazen with a huge explosion. That's got to have rung his bell big time. Watch again in replay. You can see on the far side of the track, the bike stumbles. You see a little flash and then a big bang. I think Job's absolutely A-OK -okay because he's sitting up on the bike and moving around. Martin, another event, another win. Not the way that you wanted to win, obviously, but still a great performance from you and the team. Yeah, yeah. I just, just heard from my brother, from the guys. Uh, he had an explosion, Job. Just hope he's OK and everything. Not the way to win, but... Uh, Apart from that, the, the team did an excellent job with tuning the bike. I think this uh, the six sevens we've been running now was absolutely the max for the track. The track is perfectly prepped, but the, the temperatures and the weather was too high, unfortunately. So I uh, just want to get back, see if Job's okay, and then if he's okay, then we can celebrate. Well, good news is the celebration started. Job was okay. Martin de Haas as well out in front in the FIM Championship going to Santa Pod. Job Hayes in second, Ronnie Olsen in third. Final in top fuel bike, can Ian King sweep all before him here in Hockenheim? We're about to find out. Low ET of every round, number one qualifier. Pretty much banner weekend for the Gulf Oil Grand Prix Originals team. Rickard Gustafsson would like to go out with a bang and he probably will be his last season on the funny bike. Like I alluded to earlier, he's actually built a top fuel bike. He's already tested it but doesn't feel it's where it should be to actually debut it in competition just yet because uh, 
These bikes take so much development, you need to make sure that they're okay before you bring them to the racetrack and start actually racing them. And that's exactly what Rickard is doing. But these two have had so many humding battles over the year. I must admit myself, I'm looking forward to seeing Rickard on the top fuel bike up against Ian King, because these two are fierce competitors against each other as he is now. Wait till they've both got supercharged nitro machines. Rickard, near side of the racetrack. Pretty much the world's quickest funny bike. Up against Ian King with one of the world's quickest top fuel bikes on the near side of the racetrack. This for the biggest trophy at the Nitro Olympics for the top fuel bikes. Whole shot for Rickard. Ian's already gone past him though by half track. And the big power of the Nitro bike takes it by about that much. Ian King with a great weekend. Ian back on form this weekend in Hockenheim. Quickest bike in just about every run and you know you're only just behind Rickard in the points championship. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, but it was a really tough weekend. It might have looked reasonably simple for us, but trying to cope with these uh, adverse temperatures and track conditions is quite tricky. The track's reasonably, reasonably good even today. It's gone off a little bit today compared to yesterday, but uh, they did a good job preparing this track. It shows what can happen here at Hockenheim. Um, and uh, as I said, we just made the best of what we had. Well, in the championship, it's really no biting stuff going into Sandspot in the final round. Rickard leads Ian King, but by less than one round. What an absolutely fantastic end to a wonderful weekend back here in Hockenheim. Track's been fantastic, weather's been really hot, the crowd as huge as ever. Championship still wide open, heading into the last race at Santa Pod in September. We'll see you there. <laughs>